their yeah. versions of hardware. <laughs> yeah, there's an intro that, and that's the plugin thing that I was talking about. Right, is like okay. the VST plugins and stuff. But you, so, say you want to run a compressor against one of your channels, mm -hmm. like you could do it with a compressor plugin, or you could have an outboard compressor deck, like an, a rack mount compressor, to to each and you could run your you could run your channel out to that deck, and then back into another recording channel and actually do the and compression the hardware. Why? Would, why? Would because you people like the analog sound still sometimes. Like it's it's it's, it's why do you do anything in Photoshop? Uh, okay, yeah. so these so hang on no, because you you've thrown another unexplained spanner into the works that I only understand because I understand electronics. You you're talking about plugins and digital DSP, and then all of a sudden you drop oh because people like the analog sound and you. Yeah, you, missed, can, you can analog. You missed the crucial educational point that this compressor deck is not a DSP and it's an analog device. So, like sending so a signal out to a guitar pedal, for example, or a, a set of valves, or a bucket full of spoons, or something, to make a to make to 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 modify the signal and then bring it back into the deck. Um, well, yeah. you can do it right digitally as well. And there's a whole yeah, of course, because it has just a DSP filter out there. The, the 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 funny thing is, there's a whole ecosystem out there that's they're basically emulator things of real world like hardware yes. devices. Like you'll get my dad's you'll, guitar you can go buy a is such a device. Plastic, yeah, like you can oh, go buy a library of plugins oh. that'll do classic guitar pedals and stuff like that. It's like VSCO uh, film emulation. Yes. Yeah, my yeah. dad's yeah. got a guitar that yeah. does exactly, exactly that. He has a, a a stack that modifies it to sound like uh, modeled guitars and so on and so on. And um, and yeah. just like with the analog digital thing in the imaging world, like you can do this hybrid thing if you want where you're doing part of it in analog and part of it in digital. But why then, would you... you know, like, if you, I'm still a bit bemused have, as to why you would build. Well, you have to remember, too, a lot of people that are in this industry have been around since before there ever was DSPs and whatnot. And so they've evolved their software, like their production workflow now to, to, to be doing their assembly and, and whatnot in the software. But they have this massive stack of, like, very good high-end analog equipment that it's like, why not just use it, I guess, it, unless you want to go digital with it. And like, that's what they're good at. It's just like how you were just talking about like photo mechanic versus uh, bridge and stuff. Like you have audio engineers who have been around for a long time and they have their workflow set with their, uh, their hardware that they like. And yeah, so, I suppose so. You know, why, why what, I, what I wanted to query was like why you would have, it, let's say you're, you a compressor is a fine example, right? So a digital compressor is configurable. It just happens in software, right? So yeah. if you're building a new sound desk, like the Pro Tools type sound desks, right? The, the, you know, the giant 40 channel knob stravaganza um, devices, why you would bother building in hardware it's to taste. that modifies sounds if exactly the same way taste, really yeah just like photographers modify things manually they'll do a print photograph the print and then you know it's so different Pro Tools from, will add yeah, their compressor print. because they're like use our compressor it's great rather than yeah or because a lot of times equal. if you look if you look more closely at some of those big studio picks like the the desk doesn't have a bunch of rack mount equipment it just has a giant deck on top of it with a bunch it's of sliders and that's not and that's not like processing stuff that's just control surface no no, 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 no hang on hang on are not, doing everything. not an analog version i'm saying like why would you build digital filters into a desk if it's ending up in software analog, oh i'm not saying you're but building why them would into you... the oh. i'm not saying that they're in the deck so the control surface is different from the the analog equipment like you have your no, control to get analog, you know, analog. i know oh, why you would have okay. analog stuff right the right. same way people have valve amplifiers and then, still right why would you build digital filters thing. into something right then 
if uh, you DJ, for example, to make it much simpler, right. I have a tractor control thing on my desk, yeah. which I use via my, um, what do you call it, my laptop, which okay. has software on it, tractor software. So it controls that, all the knobs and buttons and dials yeah. that match yeah. is in the software. And that needs the um, laptop to work. But you can now get the controllers that you just put a USB stick right. in. Right, okay, so... Thing. So, There's certain applications where you way. might not want a laptop in the chain, but you still want a compressor, some reverb, a limiter, and those other digital no, no, filters no. Well, available. Yes and no. Basically, the soft, the, the hardware is advanced enough so that the control surface can actually be the computer as well. That's yeah, so you, you can, have you can to do have your... a control surface and software and, and the laptop, right? So, so you can now do the whole thing it. with just the control surface without having yes, to have a laptop because, in the pipeline. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, no, that, that, that answers the question. Yeah, answers the question. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. if, because if I could connect my powerful, if I could connect my camera <laughs> to the to a screen, if I could connect my camera to a TV, and then have a Lightroom MIDI Behringer and not have a laptop, it's that, isn't it? I'm 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 going to do my photo editing yes. without a PC yes. because the controller can modify so the raw file and the XMP yeah. files. Has the Lightroom built into it rather than controlling yeah. Lightroom? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. All right, that 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 works out imagine, in my brain. Um, another use case for this is is just for kind of rough cuts when you're tracking. Like, if someone, if even if you're in a studio or whatever, if you're in someone's living room and you're recording them singing or whatever, maybe you want kind of a rough cut that you need a little bit of compression or whatever. And the thing that these devices will do too for you is like they'll they'll apply the the stuff but they'll still output like a raw track it's kind of like jpeg versus raw on your camera that way you can have kind of that rough cut right away right after and then you also have the raw file that you can do more fine-tuned stuff yeah. to. yeah okay because i have literally never been involved in an audio project on any level um i've I have never production. the only the only music yeah. I have ever produced has been out of a euphonium or a drum right. kit. Right. The reason you know, the reason <laughs> why is because you know you know you know all the techie fiddling you can do in, in imaging and video editing. Uh, music production makes that look simple and trivial because you have so many millions more parameters and tweaks. Are you you basically going to a, a black hole of endless fiddling? So I know for me it would be a nightmare because you know you can always change it. Yeah. So imagine so Lightroom, Photoshop, yeah. and Capture One all together, and then that's just a tiny, tiny bit of the whole change. Yeah. Imagine that's still also, just a small part of the whole process. You, know, you can play also, music on a piano, but you know you can you know, switch oh, yeah. the software. Oh my god! Renders. Hey. Also, in photography, the, the order of the things that are applied is preset in the software, but in music and audio... No, not necessarily. You can it's do things prescribed audio. in the software. Well, yes, you can do yes, it whatever yes, order you yes. want, but it's, there's a general prescription of events that is, you know, fairly uniform. But the, the other thing as well, that yeah. I think comparing it to photography is a bit fruitless. I think comparing it to video is more sensible because photography is like a single beat right <laughs> whereas we're talking about mastering a, a continuum so i think comparisons yeah, to video they're, they're, tools they're, make more similar. sense you know it's basically you think of it as photography and video and um uh sound design you know and you're getting yeah. close to part of music you know it's yeah it's, it's a black hole of yeah. and tweaking that's why just being a mixer or just being a master, like mastering engineer, are like dedicated fields within audio. It's because right. there's so much that goes into just those without even making the music without in the first place. Actually, being a performer in the first place, yeah. Like being able to being able to hear the channels properly and and move them around as a as a mixer to, you know, to balance out all of the different sounds that are happening simultaneously is like an art in itself and then you know even beyond that once that step is done like applying those final touches of like volume leveling and everything else that a mastering engineer does it's like there's a bunch of different levels of that 
Yeah, same sadly, same mastering, mastering engineers are slowly going away. Only the, the biggest places and houses really use them uh, anymore. People are starting to, to stop right. having the, the idea. To, yeah. Because cause that's partly because the software is caught up a little bit more, right? Like you have, you uh... have software like Isotope that can even do like 80%, maybe even 90% of it for you in, in kind of one hit. Uh, in theory, yeah. Uh, what I see in practice, well, at, at least our, our scape here is different because the attitudes in general of professionals here are, are laxer and, and worse. But anyhow, uh, my partner has uh, taught uh, lessons uh, uh, schools of audio and everything, and it seems basically that the, the idea of what a master engineer does and what why is important, what is really the, the job, has uh, evaporated into the air. People do not have the concept a lot. It's not that they think they can do it with the so software. Oh. It's just that they, they don't have the the concept in general about it. They don't even think they need it. They they, sure. they, don't, they don't even even think. It, it, it's the it's something to do, uh, and I think one thing that that has uh, ah, I forgot the word in English, but that has added some energy to this is when we shifted to iTunes Store, and people are starting to think and buy tracks instead of albums. Mastering is centered around a whole album mostly. Right, and right. This to establish, a little to establish you continuity, to... you mean across the whole album? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You yeah. still, have, you still, you still make it for the whole album. The fact that people buy tracks set individually afterwards doesn't matter. Yeah, but uh, more and more, yes. you you're gonna see new artists in Spotify and everywhere releasing singles in uh, between quotes rather than albums. It's, it's a trend that's changing, it's, it's shifting. There is a lot of albums being released still, yes, but really, as, as more and more people consume only tracks, the releases are being separated into tracks rather than albums as a whole. But the singles have always been released and albums are, you know, a separate thing. That's always been the case. So I don't think he's indicting that you know, as the, the still... singular cause of it, though, Jez. I think it's just a contributing... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just um, albums are still, it's still mastering for albums, even if um, you know the, they sell uh, have singles come out separately. Yeah. But the the mastering, so who would do the job of that? Who would do that now? Is it simply not done, or is it that it's now been assumed by another job role in the process? Well, things overlap. Um, so done, like a photography and filmmaking, where you you might have far fewer people on set. A chain of production, like the photographer used to send off prints to a printer's or a dark room, and now he does it all himself. Yeah, know, that's, the, that's the point of my question. Finish. So. so it, you don't that have a everywhere. you don't have a darkroom guy anymore. The photographer does the majority of the darkroom stuff himself. So, with respect to the audio mastering thing, obviously, it, there was a function that used to take place. Who is now doing it if it's not a dedicated engineer? Sorry, not so, the artist. So, so again. Well, you you guys were talking about a mastering engineer, right? And then that started you, to say have, um, that the mastering right, engineer is going a... away. Well, if they're going away, either the job that they were doing wasn't important, and so they're now just redundant, or someone else is doing it. Well, in in times of rec literal physical vinyl records, the person who the vinyl mastered it, and that was a skill in itself. And obviously, with vinyl, you know, this effectively disappeared that job also disappeared but that that was the original mastering who's actually the um, putting the, the sound onto the, the how do you call it the template which then made the 
stamped out the record. Okay, so that job's gone away because vinyl has gone away. So that yeah, but vinyl's coming back. So you, you know, people are doing it, but there's far fewer people who can do it. And it's a it's a well, it's it's you know, it may be resurging, but it's tiny compared to its original thing. It's you know. well, mastering is mastering is not important only for vinyl. It's important for any kind of album, including CDs and digital. Well, no, no, it's, it's important. You need... But so, so can anybody answer the question? It's disappeared. Okay, as far as I've seen it, Danger, it's a, uh, here in here or, or the few cases I've seen it here because uh, music productions here is not the liveliest in. in I've Marco. seen it, but anyhow, uh, I've seen it partly go away, people ignoring it, and partly being taken as a job of the mixing engineer, the the, the guy who mixes the tracks. Uh, the, the the channels yeah. in the track. You also okay, have so it that, still pretty prevalent. In is that the producer? No, the producer is the overall sound, and and basically think of a producer as like a film director, uh, who yeah. organises musicians, suggests so ideas. So, what's says, the job this. title of the person that mixes the tracks together then? Mixing engineer. Mix, mix engineer. Yeah. The what? Sorry. Because like anything something. else, you can create. Mixing engineer, but like anything Mix, else, uh, creative industry is mixing. Mixing, mixing. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So you, you mix yes, music. So, but like anything in engineer. creative fields, things vary. You know, depending on production. You work on one film set and you got twenty film roles, yeah. twenty jobs. So and when the one, thirty. So when the in a typical workflow, then you've got a bunch of poked up artist in a studio and there's mics everywhere and there's a guy <laughs> sat at a big table too. full of knobs and wheels and sliders that's your producer he's he's that's is that the mixer so... or is that the recording well that's the producer that's the producer so the producer well, the isn't no no the, producer the, one who... yeah, the producer the sits behind not the engineer necessarily it's very much a creative role producer whereas yeah. the mastering and engineering okay. uh, mixing so, is a very so, technical thing specifically yes so the person, they there might that. be someone in the room the going the louder way. darling more bass darling give it more wallop yeah. and then there's a man sat yeah. sliding producer. and dialing things while they're doing the that's, recording who that's is that the recording engineer in that recording case. engineer there, okay yes there, there's two guys in the room the one saying louder dear is the producer. The producer. And the yeah. one saying get your fucking mouth away from the microphone is the recording engineer. Is the recording engineer. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're just, uh, okay. If you're and like, then uh, if if you're like Dead Mouse and you're making EDM stuff, you're just the producer. You're not. There's no recording engineer or yeah. artist in the chain right. there. And it's so, just the start so the producer. We've we're not dealing with that goff right because that's somebody sat at a laptop doing almost everything themselves right in the studio you've got the recording engineer that's telling them to stop licking the microphone you've got the producer who's in charge of the direction of the whole thing like more this more that less that less the other once you've recorded those instruments and the singing and all the stuff into the digital masters the mixing engineer then turns that into a track. Correct. And then and the, the mixer producer engineer is still guy. Over the mixing engineer. And the producer is still going to be involved yeah. with that guy, obviously. Yes. Right? But, yes. And the mixing engineer may well be the same person as the recording engineer. It's but like the, you, you could separate out. Like at that point. Yeah. Okay. A bit like you might get your lighting guy to do your retouching, you, but realistically you, the, you get two jobs. You mentioned the retouching stage at that point. Yeah, okay. So now you've got a mixing engineer that does the, the retouching, right? If you will. Yes, that... and you know, you know that the, the dust, that large machine, the mixer you, you told yeah. which nowadays is mostly a control surface. Yeah. The mixing engineer uses the same thing because if you have you still have all the different parts like layers the in this case tracks the uh, channels that you recorded for the track right yes Once he's yeah. done he'll give you your jpeg which is a stereo uh, track 
something with only two layers, left and right. I've just posted a picture of Den Dead Mouse's laptop that he does all his work in. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's an analogy for you, Dan. It's so basically it's a fully fledged studio. A... But he's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's he did it all himself. But yeah, so he's he's like the freelance photographer where he's lighting, shooting, retouching, and shipping the whole thing all in one. Yes. Go. Yeah. Because Whereas, he's, so... because he's not a band. If you've yeah. got six people in a band, then it's a different dynamic, so and yeah, you know. Whereas, yeah, yeah. Know, I have an analogy for you, Jen. So imagine you were doing a commercial photography workflow. You have the, the photographers, the, they, they've shot the thing. Now you send it to someone who's just going to do the composition aspects yeah. of, the, of the final piece. They finish putting it together. Now they pass it to someone else to do the final like color grade to match it yes. completely, yeah. perfectly with the brand colors yeah. and stuff. That's your mastering engineer. Okay, so not disagreement from disagreement from the southern hemisphere. Mm. Okay. It's not exactly, but it's, it's no, close enough. Uh, it's close enough, but uh, uh, the way I see it is the photographer, the recording engineer, takes uh, the raw uh, file. The uh, uh, mix engineer produces your final JPEG. Uh, file from the editing with layers and everything, adding uh, filters, etc. And then the mastering engineer produces the physical prints and the framing to hang in the, into the gallery. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Or or cuts the digital at its simplest simplest form. Cuts the digitals in the right places where yeah. they need to be cut. Right. I think the thing right. problem is we're trying to make definitive Agreed. statements about what people do and it just varies enormously it's depending on the yeah, particular if job you, yes, but yeah. if you don't it's know varies. what any of those Excuse jobs me. are and that's me yeah right yeah then you need I to mean, define them so that you can understand what that person is um, actually trying to do oh, no, that, and that's then that's you can thing. say yeah but that guy might do a bunch of this different stuff so there's a whole bunch of processes. Right. Just there. like in the imaging world. The, I think that right. the person who influences this the most is the hey, producer. So the producer has his, his uh, methods and his are steps. You guys down okay. Yeah, the producer yeah. also okay. can be a creative person writing okay. stuff for the band Door. as well. It's not just, yeah. you know, there is yeah, much like uh, the creator. It's not just, you know, they. Or like if you're dead mouse or yeah, any other... Yeah, speak the sound. Why, why no, is he I'm, I'm notable? Talking about... right. I, was, example. I figured people would know it when I said that name. I don't think I've ever heard successful... anything by him. Well, there's millions of bands out there. How about so... Skrillex or... Uh, you you need to mention heavy metal type of things. Yeah, no, if it's if it's nine inch nails. Thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. Trent Reznor. Just about Trent Reznor. Yeah. He's, you know, he's a producer. Yeah. And a, um a band person. So he he crosses <laughs> over. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because I know I've seen him heavily involved in production. Like in you know because yep. he does well, he does all of that for nine inch nails, right? So um, Well he is nine inch nails. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, there's other, <coughs> there's other performers that do the thing, but yeah, it it yeah. Um, okay, well that makes a yeah, bit more sense now. Because a lot of these, it's like when you when you look at the film credits in a movie, and you're sat there going, I don't know what any of these jobs are. Like, what are they? Yeah. Right. What do they do? Uh, so, really, uh, there was a great. No love for um, there was and a great... the film is it's harder because things have changed over time. Things overlap, mm. but they're and, and they're, they're more complex than the name gives. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. more Mas in cinema than there is in audio. Like mastering for mastering audio for film, though, it's like you have to make sure that you're cut that you're mastering it for like different theater formats and like streaming and all this other stuff. So there's this whole raft of like kind of specific skills slash standards yeah. that you have to know about for filmmaking. On a simple level, it's stereo mix or 5.1 mix. 
In no, 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 five point one max, and it's like uh, theater versus Netflix yeah. versus yes, YouTube. Yes. Well, the, the also, thing is, there, uh, crafty, you can the, you can the take thing that. For free, free and audio, it's a little more complex because it has a little more of mixing than mastering for music. Because, for example, not not only is five point one different in home than theater. Um, yeah, but mixing I, I, no, volumes. I'm just. I'm just... Right, I'm just saying to, for Dan to understand a simple difference. You mix in yeah, two yeah, different yeah. things. Just just the home alone is two different things. You've got stereo mix and yeah. you've got a 5.1 mix. There's actually more than that, but just as a straightforward. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, sorry, sorry. Obviously, sorry, different, yes. cinema, different cinemas have different systems. They have yeah, a, it's like even the, the, the one thing one I do know about is the colour, right? So you no, have to the, edit the colour differently if it's being projected versus digitally projected versus displayed on a DVD. So that at least has an analog. I do understand because if you yeah, send the same, the same as, um, if you send the same color master out for DVD as you do digital projection in cinema, it's going to look aids on one of them. Right? Yeah. Like, it's it the same as you, yeah. you, you work in Adobe RGB or Pro Photo, whatever, to get the maximum thing, mm. but then you output for print for a web or whatever into that thing. So you get sRGB for web and you get CMYK, yeah, yeah, yeah. and film is the same. But audio is a bit like that. Yes, but well, yeah, so you, you, you've got to, if you are starting with a cinema THX 5.1 mix, you can't just press a button and get stereo bacon. You have to actually make the stereo bacon yourself, right? Because otherwise it's not going to work. Yeah, it's a bit. Yeah. It, well, you basically start Do from you know the, the same... story behind THX? <laughs> right. The story I'm... behind what, THX be right is back. kind of interesting. What do you mean, the name? Uh, just the the origin of the THX standard in the first place um, that was, was George Lucas. for it was George Lucas when he went to put out the first Star Wars movie and he screened it for the first time. He was like, the audio in this theater is such garbage that I don't want to screen my movie here. And so he basically he uh, he forced all the movie theaters in the area. He was like if you don't bring your audio up to like, you know, this certain standard or whatever, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to distribute my movie to you. And that Are you sure that's true? Was... Because that distribution is a very, very different thing from the filmmaker. And they use the apps well, this completely was, separate. Remember this was back in the seventies. Oh, that, and dist distributors had much more power then. And again, it was a completely different thing from the, the film, well, think... film studio and distributors were separate businesses. There's a yeah, huge I mean, amount of um, trouble in the States of because clout. of it. Oh, yeah. He but had a lot of clout from the Star unusual. Wars movie for whatever reason that the that he was able to... It, maybe it wasn't him individually, right? Like it was his... Like it was Lucasfilms or whatever was able to pressure the the theaters. And eventually that led to like the formal THX standard is what I was talking about. Well, st films oh. weren't even in stereo until the 80s. Yeah. Well, no, which is now it's us. If you make stereo in the cinema, and, and that's something my dad and I try to teach uh, filmmakers here, and, and they don't understand. But if you make stereo in a cinema, people are really screwed because the speakers on the sides are so far away that if you're yeah. sitting on one side, you're missing half of the sound. That's why the dialogue and the most important is from the center, from the from the front, from the screen, and it's yeah. announced. Yeah, that's a separate thing. But it used to before the eighties, it was just mono. Yeah, it was just and yeah. So by stereo, you have, separate, stereo. you have you have a spatial sec sequence to it, a, a spatial um, part of it. So you have a left and right, but it doesn't mean as a left speaker and a right speaker. It's more complex than that for film because of the size of the room and things. But you can, you know, you can bias things across. But it was just, yeah, I, I think it was um, a film called Outland. Sean Connery set on Jupiter or something, or near Jupiter, science fiction movie, and that was one of the first stereo oh, films. The Wikipedia page actually has a good history for, for THX here. Oh, it's for the third movie. That's right. That that would make more sense. By the way, the third of the Jedi. Uh, well, that that 
in image wise that's one of the things that also happened with the digital cinema the dci part of the idea or the big part of the idea of the dci specification or certification for projectors is that once you make your movie it should look the same everywhere right in theory yeah i mean that's you need to do that with film because it's film whereas digital you need a, a standard output so it makes sense. Oh, that's interesting. THX is owned by Razer now. By oh, whom? That's it. Razer what, the laptop owns THX. gaming people. Yeah, like the gaming people. Yeah. They bought it in 2016. Oh, that's because oh uh, Lucas God. sold off most of his like, Star Wars and everything to Disney. So yeah, maybe that was his bail. I guess it's a kind of a fair i mean that does give razor with all the history that 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 all the ip that that company must have in you know making spatial audio and stuff like that or making spatial audio standards and whatnot now razor can put all of that into its headsets and then it has the brand branding of thx it could be like all of our stuff is thx all right yeah um, on this subject I mean, well, i've got a, a mac laptop and one thing that people comment about this new one how good the sound was. And I have to say, the stereo imaging from a laptop is astonishing. It it sounds like you're surrounded by sound. I don't know what yes. magic they use. Do you have the it's, new uh, one? Do you have the M1 16 inch. Mac or the M1? No, it's a 16 yeah, I inch. The... But it's, I've got the main lot... one. Sorry. Oh, a lot of amazing. the technology that was developed for sound bars is going to benefit laptops. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, the sound on this is amazing. It's uh, I have the the 16 inch M1 Max now, and the, I was kind of blown away by just how good the yeah, sound I've, was relative to. I've stood in places, you know, I stood next to it, and it sounds like the sound, I'm surrounded by the sound. It's better than any stereo system I've ever. Used. I've listened to a lot of I very think, very good. I stereos. think they've applied the same some of the same stuff to it as they put in the the AirPod Pros and the AirPod Pro Maxes because. My AirPod Pro Maxes, those, like, when you put them into, like, the 3D audio mode, it's kind of, it's crazy how kind of you follows you to, around. Um, there's a type of music production, or mastering, I should say, where they mess with the spatial sound. And no, you I need haven't. to have headphones to listen to it. And it's absolutely amazing. It's a Billie Eilish song that's been remixed that way. And it's just astonishing to listen to. It sounds like no, it's 3D. Try it out. Oh, what the hell is it called? Um, oh, I've forgotten. Yeah, I'll, def I'll definitely check that out. By the way, when I got in, you were talking about the control, control surface and saying something using the control surface directly. Which was it? Because I, I entered too late. Oh, we were just talking in general about control surfaces and how there's the hybrid things now that, you know, you have the control surface with the DSP stuff built into it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. For all, for audio, you mean? Oh, yeah. It's 80, you know, 80 audio. Okay, I'll check that out. Thank you. The sound travels around you. It's um, quite Oh, spooky, I guess actually. one of the big places... One of the big use cases we didn't mention when we were talking about the control surface plus hardware stuff was really like, I guess it's not control surface as much, but, you know, the things like the Go XLR, all this, all the streaming, all the higher end streaming audio interfaces that have a little bit of DSP built into them so that you can go live with, you know, a little bit of compression or whatever. That's another thing that uses some hardware DSP now. Because you might not be able to do that on your machine if you're streaming without adding unacceptable latency, depending on your hardware specs. Yeah, even though nowadays with everything being digital uh, from the first phase or second phase, uh, adding DSP to devices is much simpler. So. Well, and the tech has definitely shrunk now for hardware yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, 
Like you could do so much more just out of like a one one U rack unit now. Well, basically, oh, yeah. this, the phone in my pocket is you know much more powerful than a workstation from a decade ago. Yep. Yeah. And you put you know you put that um, into a you know a MIDI unit, which is obviously a lot bigger and there's more room, and you've got a, a lot of. Um, Yeah. Why is Discord so shite laughing smiley? Oh my god, the GFX 50R is a beautiful camera. It is. I would love one. Oh, me too. My new hobby for gear. My new hobby for gear buying is homeowners tools. Yeah, I've seen. I got my excuse now to buy a, buy a table saw, I think. I don't know what I missed there, but I was cut off for a minute or so. Uh, Can you hear me? Talking about even gear. Hear Can hear you. I think it was just jazz. Yeah, I, 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 I went outside and I forgot I, I was on Wi Fi. I can't wait. To, I have to do that here right now because I just have the shitty ISP router all the way down in the basement where the oh and where the fiber box is. But tomorrow we're doing our final like moving truck move, and so I'm going to transplant all my network equipment over here. But I need to yeah. wire up the house for that. So I've I got have, a good uh, signal here, but just as I go away from where it is, good. It still tries to hook onto the Wi-Fi rather than data. It goes a bit squiffy, so I sometimes manually swap between them. And I'm surprised. I move and forget, and it just cuts out. I'm surprised I'm able to even able to do Zoom meetings with video up here in my second floor office, like with the router all the way downstairs. I gotta drill a hole in my wall. I gotta. I got one of those big ass like two foot installer bits to drill a hole through my exterior wall up here in my office so I can run some cat oh, six yeah. down the side yeah, of the house. Can... Yeah, I've got one of those. Yeah. I gotta crawl up in my attic and uh drill a hole out there and then do one people pin to the wall. Yeah, I'm gonna pin it to the wall from the outside because I can't find a good route from the basement up through two floors to get yeah. to the attic. So I'm just gonna run it out and then it's up much, the it's side. Much, much easier. Yeah. It's easier for you as well because you haven't got our bricks. We have engineering bricks in our house and it melts um, tools. You need to be very oh. careful drilling into it. They're exceptionally hard. But yours is a wood frame house. It's you know. It's like wood frame, comparison. vinyl siding. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, this will be uh, pretty simple, case. hopefully. You know, I I have well, workmen when they come here, and they budget a time have to double it. <laughs> if they're drilling into the wood, uh, like the electrician next door, he he reckoned it was a week's work, and it was two weeks because it took so long getting the rings, <laughs> and you melt drill bit. And the various tools they use because they're just, so they just you have to drill very slowly like because it, oh, it just it just you know it'll crumble it if you drill too quickly no, into no, no. it. It it just it, no the the drill bit literally melts. Oh wow! It goes red. It 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 goes bright red and melts. I've had a an inch taken off the end of one of mine when I pushed it too hard one day, and they're high quality drill bits. 
I had to buy an SDS mains drill to use on the house because a normal battery drill wow. doesn't even t come close to touching it. So this is for any exterior work that you need to do or when you're dealing with an exterior wall or this is interior too? No, any brick work in the house. It's all the bricks in the house oh, wow. are stupendously. It's just what we call engineering brick. And um, it's just a hard, different grade of brick. Some bricks you can drill to very easily, but these ones are unbelievably hard. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so I've just discovered our outside um, um, outhouse has uh, got a leaking tap and the drips are getting a lot faster. So I need to fix that somehow. <sighs> what are the temperatures there? Uh... I can't convert my head, but it's in the 90s. Very high today. We're, we're going through like a... Yeah, we have like a countrywide heat wave going on right now. Yeah, well, Europe is being record-breaking temperatures at the moment. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of America this week. Other yep. places it's are getting uh, like... 40, degree, 40 plus degrees. Yeah, that's like our southern out. states are getting that. Yeah, but in That's the UK, it. 25 degrees is hot. So, yeah. all right, I got this a meeting. Is, this is uh, Cheers. Oh my god. Ah, uh, he went away. That's good. I got 28.1 inside. Yeah. If I had... If he was here, I, I told him what I'm fighting with and maybe he'd get angry in my stead. This is crazy. This must get pretty hot where you are at times. Sorry, I missed that. Was I presume it must get pretty toasty where you are at times? Uh, no, it's yeah. it's toasty, but it's uh, it's about nice all day all year long. We oscillate between seventeen and twenty-eight Celsius. Well, that's quite a good range, though. Yeah, Unless you like snow? Not in yeah, Mexico. Never snow. Oh, yeah. You're fair, you're, not, you're not quite equatorial, but you're not that far away, are you? 10 degrees. We're 10 degrees north from the equator. Oh, that's very, very close. So yeah. your days don't change much either, do they? No. Because it gets dark minutes. here at the moment. Uh, well, a week or two ago, it was dark at 10 o'clock. Uh, sorry, it was light at 10 o'clock at night. It was still yeah. uh, daylight. Whereas you probably get dark at six ish, isn't it? Every day. Yeah, you should see uh, Pro Alias, who joins the voices sometimes. He's from Norway. Uh, oh, yeah. During summer. It's cra it's crazy. He, he's shown me daylight photos from midnight. Yep. Well, I've been yeah. Sweden in this time of year, and you get three hours of darkness, and it's not really that dark. It doesn't go properly black. So obviously if you're yeah. there um, a month earlier and a bit higher, you know, it's then 24 hours. But when I was in Guatemala a few years ago, it was confusing because it got dark so early. It was like night, you know, at tea time for us, dinner time. Yeah. Because, you know, here, you know, you... You get very short days in winter, so it'll be going dark at four o'clock, and then in summer, you know, it's 
I can still see what's going. That's in the woods. It's darker again. What are you working on, Lars? Uh, sorry? What are you working on at the moment? Uh, right now, fighting the local registrar, which are a bunch of blabbering morons. Oh, so that sounds part of the course for, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fighting someone, where, uh, just give me a second. Okay, nice. Gonna have to go fix a server. Gonna have to go get the mechanics that fixed quote unquote my dad's car. Uh, quote unquote fixed my dad's car tomorrow to fix their fix <laughs> because oh, well, I, it I wasn't used, done uh, properly. Our, our, yeah, I used our Passat yesterday, two, uh, two days ago, for the first time in months. And the, the fuel in it's been there since last year. I think it's gone gunky and it's causing problems. And mm. it's a full tank as well. Because the car was very, very sickly. And it's like bad fuel. Bad. And diesel, mm. well, fuel, you know, like in the, in the Mad Max films where they chase fuel, in reality, fuel doesn't last very long. It goes off. And that's what, I think that's what's happened to um, my car. I don't use it very much. Well, barely use it. Yeah, in this case, it's a problem with the water cooling system. They they charge a lot and fix and change the radiator for a new one, change a lot of hoses, uh, rebuild a piece, but there's a water leak, a high pressure water leak, so. They, so they haven't put it together properly. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's not good. No, it is not. And we have a problem here also that for more than a year now, we are importing either or gasoline or a component for gas, and it's shitty gas. So uh, I have to contact. This guy, give me one second. There you go. Ah, when you're trying to rest, I'm just getting up from three days in bed, probably with COVID, I don't know. And oh, that's not, just got not that. hit. Yeah, just three days. But I just got hit with a barrage from, of message from different people. Ah. There you go. Another thing solved, quote unquote. unquote. I was saying the gas is not very high quality, so the, like I don't know petrol. how to say it. petrol. Yes, I don't know how to yeah. say it in English, but because gas is the, um, is gas in in UK. Yeah, so I, sadly I prefer that, but I I have walked away sadly from. Uh, British English, which I prefer for several reasons, but anyway. Uh, the petrol, the, the anti-detonant, I don't know how, what the right word for it is in, in English, but it's not very good, so... Is it additive? Uh, okay. Yeah, not, not additive, you know, originally they used uh, lead. And now they use another chemical which reduces the detonation point oh, of the gasoline. Yeah, they use lead. Petrol was lead. Well, it's not... yeah, from that a little yeah. while ago. I'm getting here now. 
Yeah, but anyhow, since the, the crisis, it's very bad. So every every octane is really lower than what they say, and that oh, can, see, so a low octane. Yeah, and can causes that causes damage and, and wear and tear the engines. Not a problem I have with my bicycle. <laughs> Only a crazy and brave use of bicycle here. Silly hot weather. I wish I could. I really wish I could. Well, not that I really could make more than two or three blocks before falling off dead, but. I wish I could. Well, it's 35 degrees here now, so it's... Um, 35. Are cool. you in the UK too, right? Yeah. I live yeah. about an hour north of Denia. Hour north. Yeah, you're still in the, in the hot sun. I mean, the whole UK is hot, but... Uh, here in yeah, the extreme north is colder. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting to over forty, I believe. Yeah, I, I, well, from my head, near London is scheduled to go over forty or above forty, and in the north is yep. about thirty-six, thirty-seven. <laughs> it's thirty-five-ish here. I think the hottest mm. place is near, not far from here, actually. Mm. Wasn't Sheffield excluded from the red zone? Oh yeah, it it was high, it was higher temperatures forecast than um, Manchester by several degrees. Yet it wasn't in the red zone. Yeah, it was a serious fuck up there. Yeah, I saw a complaint about that on the news. Hey, hang yeah, on a second. Like, did I... Why is it not red zoned? Because people are gonna think that it's okay it's to be shit. out there, basically. Yeah. Well, uh, no, you one... you made me think of a horrible joke from my dad's. You know, the, the, during the war, the, there's an announcement in a town, in a Russian town, I think. I don't remember well the joke. And they say, there, there's a train coming with oranges for the town. Everybody needs to, to gather around and wait for the train. And people go and wait for hours. And then they announce, it's not a whole train. It's only for for cows, for four. <sighs> Four units, so all the Jews go home, hmm, and the right. Jews grumble and go back home. And after a couple of hours, they say, "No, it's not four cabooses; it's only three. So everybody who's not signed up for the Communist Party go home, and they all go. They grumble and go home, and they say, "No, it's only after four hours. No, it's no three uh, units; it's only one." So everybody but the women go home, and everybody except the women go home. And finally, they say, "No, the train is not coming." And the yeah. women say, "God, the Jews always get the best part." That's a nice joke. <laughs> well, yeah, the Sheffield people always get the best. How hot is it normally in where you are? Speaker, like what's what's Again. ordinary during the summer and what's ordinary during the winter? Not like climate collapse, notwithstanding. Yeah, 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 yeah. The normal uh, through year is around seventeen or eighteen to twenty-seven, twenty-six Celsius. Okay. Yeah. So that's it's perfectly, that's the biggest oscillation. Acceptable. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Very pleasant climate, by the sound of it. Yeah, it doesn't sound too bad. 27 on the upper end for manual work and like high yeah, activity. 27. But... It's starting to be 28 more often. Mm. Yeah, of course. Thanks to that pesky liberal conspiracy fake news. Yeah. Hashtag sarcasm, by the way. Yeah. Murdered by late stage capitalism.
When when is America going to invade Brazil and stop the loggers? That's what I want to know. When they when they decide that Bolsonaro is actually, actually going to kill everybody, so they have to invade and and ah. them out. No, the Americans are going to invade Brazil and do something on, about the loggers if the price of wood keeps climbing. What they're going to do is hire the loggers. Hire the loggers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, sadly, yeah. God, it's costing a lot to build these houses. Yeah, it's because we've run out of trees. Oh, all right. Uh, can we go anywhere and steal some trees? Yep. Why, yes. <laughs> Online, they say the normal here is around 28 to 31, but 31 is really, 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 really rare. Yeah, it's well, the humidity that is important. You have, have, um, basically, two seasons. We have, yeah, we have the rainy season and the dry season. That's what we have. You also need to measure by a wet, what's known as a wet bulb temperature. And if you exceed the wet bulb thing, then people start dying because... They can't sweat. Yeah. Well, sweat makes no difference because yeah, the, the humidity yeah. is so yeah. assisted cooling at that point. You're done, aren't you? In my city, yeah. the humidity is not so high. But we have one city here that only the crazy live in. And it's a really, really large city. Probably the second or third most important city after the capital. Uh, it's near the sea. And when you get out of the plane, it feels like you've hit a wall. It's not only really hot, it's also incredibly humid. Yeah. So much so that I once went to give a discourse, a, a, a chat, a, an exposition about digital cinema. Um, the people who invited me wanted me to look at one of their cinema projectors, which was having troubles and failing and stuff, just to give them my opinion, and when I got into the cabin, projection cabin, which was pretty well sealed, they were running three dehumidifiers, the the, the which they had to empty twice a day, and the projector was rusted inside. Really? The Jesus. light cage was full of rust, yes. <laughs> wow. <Good grief. laughs> That place is, is crazy. It's called Maracaibo. Sorry, I'm, I, I gotta switch from English to Spanish to pronounce it correctly. Maracaibo. And uh, it is or was one of the main ports for the country. But damn, that place is crazy. We say the Maracuchos, which is the, the name of, of people from Maracaibo. We say they are. Uh, pasteurized because they live inside air conditioning house they live to the hot street and enter an air conditioning store so they are like pasteurized if they if they um, if, they're <laughs> running, if they're running their air con with so like a, a place like that feasibly could run their air conditioning with solar power right oh yeah it should do but economically isn't going to be able to afford to do so right uh, historically, power has always been very cheap here. But that's First, only because you don't give a shit. Like, main... South America hasn't got a great environmental record when it comes to no, power generation. No, in part we don't give a shit. Yeah. In another part, we don't invest as much as we should in, into infrastructure, so there's less, uh, less, uh, way, uh, less expense there and more failures. Also, we used to rely very, very heavily on a single uh, power source, which was uh, it, which is uh, hydroelectric. Yeah. The Guri Dam. And having a large single source also helped uh, reduce costs. Of course, it's not the only source. There's a lot of, of smaller coal plants, and I think... It will make sense, oil plants, but I'm not so sure about that, and gas plants. Yes, basically, the, the, the South America will be a key player in the demise of humanity on two fronts. One, 
thundering along with fossil fuels because it's cheap, to allowing the rainforest to be destroyed because they want money. And the unfortunate position uh... is that you can't turn around to South America and say, stop cutting down the rainforests because everyone yep. will die because they'll say, well, we need the money. And so they'll cut down the rainforests and everyone will die. Because the Amazon is the Amazon is near tipping point now. It's almost at the point of becoming a yep. carbon emitter. And if, if, if Bolsonaro doesn't stop the loggers, we're all dead. It's as simple as that. We are all dead within 20 years. Right, basically, not necessarily dead, are, but like civilization. We are is done. very right. We are like, very, very, very lucky that Bolsonaro doesn't believe much in climate change, because if he believed in climate change, he will go out and help the loggers personally. Huh. Problem is, if they don't stop that within a decade, we're done. There's nothing we can do yeah. if that tipping point gets crossed, and yet nobody appears to be applying any international pressure to solve it. They're just like, oh, well, well, we've we got to rely on we should rely on Brazil to do the right thing. But if we all uh, decide that Brazil doesn't do it, we need to do something ourselves. If we all start planting trees now, we can make up for it. It's amazing how quickly you can regreen. But the, 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 the problem with the Amazon, right, is because it's such a singular center, right? No, I, no, I understand, I understand you're that. You're not going to offset if... that. You you can offset it, but no, you have to. Every, you're, you're gonna, everywhere else has to. You're, effort. you're going to mitigate it, but you can't offset it. Like you can't. The the the, the tipping of the Amazon cannot be offset. You can reduce it, but you can't offset it. Like the the magnitude of the impact from that is world ending. Right. Civilization ending. I always love that concept. Yeah. You know. Civilization, and let's be clear, there'll be cockroaches here long after we're gone, right? Um, yep. but and, and yeah, that's... civilization, and we won't be gone entirely. No, so there'll, be, will there'll be mad survive. wax enclaves of shitty existence, right? Yeah, 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 scattered across the globe, right? Absolutely, no fuel, right? But, um, you know, it really is, it's, it's as serious as bombing the shit out of Brazil taking it over and shutting down the loggers from a, from a, from a survival of civilization wholesale perspective, that's the magnitude of the issue. And yet no just, is going to go near it until it's too late. I'm just like kind of else. sad that the, the Mad Max dystopia arrived before the cyberpunk megacorp dystopia. I really would like to, to have been a, a hacker in a Dystopia. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Yeah. No, it's but it is it's that level of urgent magnitude, and nobody's yeah, doing yeah. anything about it. Again. Right. Yeah. It's just ugh, sick of it. I'm like, I don't even know. Like, does Bolsonaro understand he can't be ruler of an empty country? Or does he just not care? I mean, like, I don't understand what's going th or not going through these people's heads, right? They are fucking lunatics who deny well, that's, the reality. That's just it. I just... That's the problem. They're denialists. And there's so have many... You seen... Have you seen Metropolis? What, the original? original? Yes. Many years ago, yeah. Well, they're like the guys who live on the top, only in this case... The bottomers live among them, but they, they just make believe or think they're not there. So that's yeah. that's the kind yeah. of people they are. Yeah, they are not blind; they're just delusional. That's just it. Not blind, delusional. They 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 actually very, very there must stupid. be an active delusion in play there. Yeah, Can't it be is that ignorant. It is. Why why do you think? Those kind of populists are, uh, do so well amongst the less educated. Oh, well, denialists can be very well educated. They're, they're, but they're denialists, you know. But they all have the same delusion, which I find peculiar. Oh my 
my God. Uh, I forgot I had to download this. How large is it? I need to subtitle a greeting. And my internet is half dead. I need to come here more often because my spoken English sucks, so I need to practice, really. This is the only way you, you do it. By doing. Yeah. yeah. That's why... Uh, native English speakers struggle with other languages because everybody wants to speak English and usually they can speak English better than you can speak their language. Yep. So we never get to practice. Just try learning Dutch. All the Dutchies refuse to speak Dutch. Refu flat out refuse. Right? Why would I listen to your terrible Dutch when I can speak to you in English? Bastard. Yep. Yep. Well, generally speaking, you know, English is so widely spoken, or at least a little bit spoken, that, you know, it's very hard to way, try. I want to ask you both something. I was, I was uh, disheartened to see Tongan had made it out of the race. Oh, of course, yeah, he's a human. It, he seemed, uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, he seemed the, the most sane of them all, and... I want to ask. Oh, no, 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 we, no, no, we, we, don't, we don't want anybody sane in charge. We want the worst possible candidate because we want them to lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we. Oh. You know, if somebody can distance themselves from Boris, they will vote them in again, and uh, despite them all being complicit. So I think I'm I'm fifty fifty on on that one. Like, I don't I don't like the notion of somebody capable being in charge when a general election comes around because it gives them the opportunity to try and win a general election. But I also think that the situation in the UK is so critical that if an absolute vacant Muppet like Truss was put in charge, she could actually destroy the country before the general election. Like she could actually uh, get Britain I by don't the general. Think so. I, I don't think that would happen. It's too much inertia. I don't but think you have a Trump level of danger there. The, the less the chances bad it is, of them getting in again are quite high. The, the less bad more, it is. Much more damage long term. Right. The less bad. The less bad it is. Well, yeah. Long term, they do more damage if they got in a second time. I, I'm not going to dispute that, that at all. That's that's the problem. But if they wreck it if they wrecking ball it to the point where when labor get in labor can't do anything they come back in in five years simple as that right so labor need at least to have a running start right they need they need to stand some chance of repairing the damage because otherwise all that happens is labor get beaten with the well you've had five years and you haven't done anything stick right <sighs> And that's a the problem we concern. have anyway is the media spin it a pro gotcha. Tory anyway, regardless. So that that's yeah. that, that's why we always have Tories in power, nearly it's always. Repugnant. It really is repugnant. I don't think really, the media, really I don't believe they the really worry. No, what they really uh, worry about is America. I'm convinced that except something really, really unexpected happens with the January 6th inquiry, Trump has a good chance of being reelected next, yeah. next year, and that really... Yes? Yeah, I've, I, I mean, they are... Uh, they are basically it's now... Yeah, they're basically now yes, a Christian a fundamental... There's a Christian fundamentalist cult it's... at the wheel on the right side of their politics. Positional right, if, not correct. If Trump right. gets reelected, it's apocalypse. I mean it. It's the end of it. Well, the only solution to most of these things is to kill everybody. That's the problem. But yeah. that's not a, yeah, a yeah, yeah. reasonable solution either. Because that you know, won't solve anything either. 
it's it's a most logical one. But the other is there is no solution in reality. Oh man, you, another you, hero joint. Self-destructive. That's the problem. Hello, pro. Hello. I hear you solved all the important problems without me. That was much uh, easier. Of we, course, we've outlined them, but uh, so far the only solution has been a lot of murdering, and uh, apparently that's not. Yeah, we, we need to raise money to hire all the best assassins. That's the thing. Ah. Uh. I see. Which means. Which means we probably have to recruit the Finnish. The Finns good yeah. at assassination? Do we have good uh, snipers? Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's something. They have, uh, they have understood uh, the Monty Python sketch about the importance of not being seen. <laughs> yeah. Anything next to Russia makes that to you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. How important is it to not be seen? Have you seen our neighbours? Like <laughs> drunken <laughs> Ivan at the wheel of a tank. Christ. Uh. Oh. Um, tired. Okay. If I end up losing my mind, it's because of Fuji. Of what? Fuji. Fuji? Why? What's Fuji done? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to do something. That shouldn't shouldn't be done, but that we need to do because otherwise it's not gonna get done. I'm trying to help the guy who develops my film to make a Fuji Frontier scanner work. All oh, right. And it's been a long spiraling descent into madness. Starting with trying to make. Windows 2000 boot correctly on a Pentium 4 machine. Oh, sounds like fun. And down from there. The lighting design, like the lighting for this routine was on point, I felt. White and purple lighting to match white and purple outfits, but done in such a way that there was at least a decent level of white wash. And it wasn't just random pinpoints of purple and white. Actually, that's not that's nice lighting. Yes, it's he it, it did well for this routine, and I think it's because they had quite a strong theme, so he was working to it. Whereas some of the other that's performers did no, the, the, the part no, of the whole not. floodlights down, floodlights up, floodlights down, floodlights up kind of schizophrenia. Why, but, why didn't you just think? Um select a whole bunch of them and then just up them all? Uh, the, this more. routine is fairly consistent. The others have been all over the place. Yeah, but I'm seeing just to the right, you, you could just select that one and then just auto-sync it and just do them all together. Yeah, uh, no, I can't. It saves a huge amount of time. Does it really? Because they all need to be yeah. rotated individually. No, no, not rotation, but the exposures and everything. But what I, I normally do... I do the exposure adjustment while I'm doing the rotation. Well, what you do is you select, well, the, one, you select the, the rest of them and quickly tweak them and then just rotate them separately. It's, it's a big time save. Hang on, let me, let me try that then. So you select that one, you select all the ones across the, the same exposure. Yeah. yeah. So, like, those yeah. four. Uh, um, oh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you're, I'm ahead of you. At least eight of them. 
Well, they normally do when they shoot. No, no, not not synchronized in that sense. What you do, you select them, and then you you enable auto sync, and then you just select individually to then just do um, the rotation stuff. Uh, so I didn't I, use auto sync for a long time. But I quite I like it a lot now. How come the um, right hand side of the um, Lightroom is fuzzed out? The controls. Uh, Parameter. Okay. Basically, it's a, it's the um, adjustment no, section it. is all out of focus. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I just don't have an answer. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why it's set up like that. Uh, I also don't know quite why the the chat list is flying as high as it is. Uh, there you go. Uh, is it not? Be yeah, I know why. It's because when you go back to the oh, grid yeah. module, all the names are visible. Oh, so now on the left, um, it's it's smudged. That kind of uh, that's fair enough. I don't even need the left hand side. I don't. I don't use it. Well, like I don't use it in the development well, module. Remember. And then... Have you got two? Oh, I always use uh, I, I, that strip at the bottom. I never use that. I just um, use the second screen as a grid. And even oh, on the I've laptop, got, I find it I've easy. I've got chat and OBS and stuff. Yeah, on the well, I assume screen. that's why you didn't do it. But even then, um, in the laptop, I just go back and forth to G, uh, to grid mode if I want to look at it. So, that so I just change is so clunky, though. It's like a four second inhale as it decides to redraw everything but i don't need to look at the strip of pictures and yeah i don't so need to see them no, because i at all. It's just yeah well, i can't have a grid on the second screen so i have to have the film strip no no, the... no I don't. but even then i'm not bothered about seeing those those pictures unless i'm doing organizational type things really oh uh, no I, I, mentally i'm already prepping for the next one when i'm editing the one i'm on so i i, I like that um, I, I have to have the blur, I have to have the adjustments blurred out because I can't control the UI. Because if I pivot back to the library module, I can't have people's names thrown up in a list. And there's oh, no way to I, defend against I it. I also have you, the, um, the top thing hidden away as well. I can't move the keywords panel anywhere because you can't reorganize the panel. So I can't hide it down at can't the bottom. You? I can hide it. I can minimize it, but I need it. Right. So I'd rather just put it at the bottom and then I could scroll down. I could just blur the bottom out, if that makes sense. You can, you can move the panels in the develop module. You can change how. the order of them. You never, you, you never used to be able to in, in Lightroom. So maybe that's a new thing. Let me just um, bring no, that don't... down like that. Because the quick develop module isn't going to change size, because it, it, that's not how it does. So I can bring the blurriness down to there, and then at least some of it will be visible in develop. I'm trying uh, to think how you change it. I, I, um, oh, yeah, you can customize develop panel. If you right click on the the actual UI black bits, okay, you, you customize it. Them. Yeah. Yeah, so you can. That's handy because something so I use differently uh, from. You can't do that in Quick Develop. You can only turn one. them on and off. Yeah, in Grid Mode. Daft. In library. Yeah. Also, any UI that auto pops things out on Hover, I note that Could Lightroom, Lightroom does it the good way where it doesn't redraw the UI. But sometimes, you know, when you hover on a pop-up panel and then oh, it redraws God. the center area because you hovered on it? Oh, oh that's annoying, yeah. It drives me nuts. This one. A, a, Mac thing that, a Mac thing that annoys me is when you do a right can you pop up thing, it doesn't take the context. You're breaking up is. real bad, Jez. Am I? Hang on a second. Yeah. yeah. Ah, I thought it was me. second word of that. For the first time, it's not my internet. No, Hooray! That, was, that was Jez. I don't know if you're still in the garden. Nope. By the way, Daniel. 
when I shoot uh, a music show with lights moving around and everything, normally I switch to manual exposure. Mm-hmm. And I just set the exposure for either with the lights or without the lights and yep. lose half the photos. It's what I do. That's what I do. Yep. Yeah. That's it. That's all you can do. Can you hear me okay now? Uh, it was when you were. That was fine. Next time you try. A, a, yeah, a I'm on a different sensor, um, so. thing now. Oh, okay. I'm back on the desktop, not headphones. Ah, right. I think the headphones were. It, when I'm moving around, it swaps between outside data and Wi-Fi. Uh, and sometimes okay. it just doesn't manage it very well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. I what I tried to do in the very first routine is I try and get the exposure dialed in for when the spotlights hit. Um, and then if I can get the exposure under the spotlights, that's what I'll shoot. Um, and then what I'll do then is if the out of spotlight stuff is really not great, I'll remember roughly how many clicks on the wheel. So it'll be like, right, okay, it's one, tw- it's one 250th in the spotlight and it's one sixtieth out of the spotlight and I'll flip between the two. But that will only happen in later routines once I'm dialed in. Like that's not something I can do off the bat. Because you need to sort you of have, you need to uh, know what's going on. You have uh D eight hundred, don't you? D eight ten, yeah. Eight ten. It doesn't have uh, custom profiles, can you just set two profiles? To the different levels and switch between them with the wheel? No, the Switching the custom profiles on the D810 is unfortunately clunky. Ah. Okay. Otherwise, absolutely yes, you could. But it's a men- you have to go into the menu to change custom shooting back. Oh, it's not on the wheel. No. On the mod wheel. No. Because oh, otherwise okay. you'd be, okay. I know what you're talking okay. about, you'd have like C1 and C2 and you'd just jog it between the two. Yeah. 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 yeah no, you have to, it, it's a complaint of the, that is actually one of the, Things. It's two, one of the reasons. There's two real bugbears with the the Nikon for event shooting. One is the access to the custom shooting modes, um, and the second is there's no flag button. There's no rating button. The Canon 5D has a rating button, which is great, right? Um, because when you quickly review the images, you can just tag them in camera, and then when you get home, you've already tagged the keepers. Um, yeah, and that the the only workaround I've found for that on the Nikon is to press the key to lock it, and that makes yeah. the file read only. And then when you import them into yeah. Windows in your file manager, you can hide file. You know, what I can do in Dopus anyway is just show all right protected files as a filter, and then tag them. Then um, yeah, but I unless it's Unless it's really, really garbage, I don't trust myself to decide on keepers on the camera LCD, really. True, but it's quicker than deleting because um, there's no confirmation. Okay, yeah. So yeah. if it's garbage, you could use that the other way around and flag all the garbage files and it's just a bit faster than deleting them. But yeah, that's the only workaround. So for someone that likes to do the rating on the fly, that's the only way I've found to do it on a Nikon, and it's a bit clunky. I don't know about the new ones, because yeah. obviously mine's a fossil, so... Um, and about the customs, the, the custom setup is one of the reasons I wanted, or I wanted the D7100. Yeah. So, it, the top... It, it has... All I have on my top dial is mirror lockup, self-timer, quiet, continuous, quiet, Continuous high, continuous oh, low, and no. single. Right? And oh, then if okay. I want to change okay. shooting bank, uh, I have to go menu, custom settings bank. I have to scroll up to custom settings bank. And then I have to sc- go across. And then I have to go A, B, C, or D. And then hit it, and it will load the custom settings bank. But that isn't the That's... shooting bank. Right, so you've also got under the shooting menu, you've got the shooting bank A, B, C, and D as well. Right, and I'm not sure either of those store exposure data. I think that's the actual camera settings. Right, 
Um, I've got it, it because it's so um, because it's so wibbly wobbly. I don't <laughs> trust it. I don't know what either one does because I don't use it. Because if I'm on stage and I'm shooting, if I could turn a dial and go from C1 to C2 of light and dark, brilliant, right? If I could have a thumb button and use a you know use a function button to hold it down and that would toggle me from one to the other, brilliant. You know, while it's held in, fantastic. But if I've got to press menu, left, enter, right, yeah. down, enter. Yeah, 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 forget it. Yeah, right? Like, what? That's not <laughs> happening on the hop. Now, I'm just going to check the custom buttons yeah. to see if the custom button can, can... It'd be nice to have a toggle button for exposure. Oh, it would. The toggle between A, B, manual exposure settings. Now, I have... On my on my swearing finger, on my swearing finger, I have spot meter on my swearing finger. So your I swearing can... finger, yeah, right. So on the swearing <laughs> finger custom button, I have spot meter, and then on the useless finger function button, I have depth of field preview. <laughs> I think that's middle finger and ring finger for normal people. Is an analog field preview really useful? I use it when I'm doing... The only time I really do it is if I'm doing bloody, um, like, ring shots, wedding -y ring shot stuff. But I can't remember how to do uh. it without it on a button. <laughs> so if it's not on the button, okay. I can't remember what, how you do it, so I have to leave it on the button, because otherwise I don't know where to go. Um, okay. Controls. Here we go. All right, so controls... <laughs> Assign function button. Okay, so press the function button. Press plus command dial. Okay, here we go. So, on the function button, if you press it and wiggle the command dial, you get choose image area. That is not helpful. Shutter speed and aperture lock. Not really helpful. One step speed slash aperture. Oh, oh. Hmm? Odd. What is that? If the function button is pressed and the main dial is wiggled, or the subcommand is wiggled, to select aperture, exposure will be varied in steps of 1 EV. Ah, uh, okay, right. So instead of doing 3rd EV, it'll do 1 EV. Um, choose non-CPU lens number. That's important. Activate D-lighting. Nobody likes the D. And exposure delay mode. <laughs> So it's basically got an entirely bunch of completely pointless functions. <laughs> okay, and then if you press the preview button with the command dials, yeah, it's the same. It'll do the same. So I have both of those turned off. Assign the bracket button to either auto bracketing, multiple exposure mode, or HDR mode. So that's also useless. Shutter speed and aperture lock off. AEFL, press command dial. Same bunch of bullshit. Um, yeah, there's, there's there's nothing. There's nothing on the D810. It, it's not sophisticated enough to have that kind of quality of life stuff. I'll tell you a useful auto function I've come across with manual. On a Ricoh pocket camera I had, when you're in manual mode, you push a button and it goes instantly into auto mode just to get a set in. So you can just push it get a set in, just tweak it manually from there. So rather so, than having to tweak it. Do you press the it's button? In your pocket for a does while, it... And the last time you used it, it was a completely different setting. You get it out, push the button, and you, you, you've got the right exposure, then you tweak it to whatever you want. So hang on. So do you, when you press the button, does it do an auto reading and then dial those settings into the manual setting? So when you let go of the button, it now yeah. has those settings. Yeah. So you, you yeah, that's button, nice. It automatically does manual. That's it's wonderful. That's really you nice. That, you never want to use the other, the old system again. That's really, really nice. That is really, really good. Yeah. Because like shooting these events, you're in manual, but you always have to shoot one and chimp it until you you're in. Whereas if you could just hit the auto yeah. button and have those settings dialed in, ready to go, that's a brilliant idea. And then switch. Yeah. I just used to a... do concert photography, which is basically the same problem. Yeah. Yeah. I used... I was shooting on film then, but I used to just do it uh, by eye. I would think that's 400 to 8. 
Yeah. And because I did it so much, I just knew what exposures were. It's good if you if if you're in similar venues, it's great. Um, uh, no, no, well, not no. Similar venues. These I used ones. To do it a lot. This guy. Um, uh, okay. Right. Yeah, because I'm I'm doing these like once every four months. Oh. I believe you. I could look at the exposure on the baseboard and guess pretty accurately what the exposure would be. Right. But again, I believe you because. What's that? I, I never use TTL on flashes. I, I hate TTL. And I found out I'm pretty good at guessing which power to use on the flash. Yeah, I've gotten pretty good at dialing what, that in through, through, through time. I read an article on how Nikon, Canon TTL worked once. Yeah. It's it's a very vague term. It's terrible design. Yeah. Totally terrible but lighting. Do you guys see the... Do you see the new... Retro Godox? Sorry, go again, uh, Lars. Did you see the new Godox one? The ring light? Uh -huh. Yes. Not, yes. not a ring light, the, the traditional style. I'm sorry, what? Uh, give me a second, I'll link the, the link. It's beautiful, I really want one. Not the ring light adapter? No, 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 no. The flash, oh. the speed light. Oh. So they come out with a new speed so light? Put... Yeah. Look it in gear links. Look at that. Wonderbar. Let's go and have a look. Gear link, gear link and blinking. The Godox looks senior. Interesting design. Yeah, I find it beautiful. It's traditional I style. Had one. style. I had one of these as a kid with the replaceable bulbs. Um, because it was my dead granddad's part of, like, so, it um, you know, it was just, just given it as a, no, just the flash. And used to play with it as like a ray gun, you know, like a laser gun choo thing. Because I, I was like four, <laughs> yeah. so I had no idea what it was. Hmm. An ode I really to like ordinary it. life. Right. And it has it has flare slave mode and all. It has what? Slave mode. Uh okay, cool. I, I think the term oh, must be changed very, now. But... That is very cute. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. I wonder how rugged it is. Um yeah. hopefully they've hopefully they've made that dependable. When it folds away, it might be pretty rugged. Well, it does it fold folds, away. yeah. Yeah, it folds up. That's it's very, beautiful very nice. Looking, that's a lovely bit of uh, lovely bit of engineering, that. That's very nice. And it's my understanding Godox doesn't have a, a bad build quality. They, they're pretty decent. Yeah, uh, the only complaints I've had are about the soft boxes, which I think are rubbish. Um, but I okay. not used the recent generation ones, so their initial ones. I have a suspicion that their first generation of uh, soft boxes were basically boxes. just rebadged crap. Um, and I wonder yeah, or not they most probably. Uh, actually got it sorted. Or if nobody cared. Yeah. Speaking of, is the offer to arrange for the SB28 still standing? I guess not. Sorry. One sec. Mm. 
bear with. Have you seen Miranda? Karma Miranda with the big fruits. You... What? No. <laughs> Miranda. No, Miranda. Miranda was a, a, a two season comedy comedy series by Miranda Hart. Yeah, she's a very tall actress. Yes. It's, not, it's ringing no yeah, bells. Like... I, I never watched it, but she was very famous because of it. Yeah, I I liked I love I love the series and I like her a lot. When anyhow, there's a character in her series that, that always go bear with while well, the phone. Right, I'm gonna go for a bike ride. Mental. Yeah, well, I'd probably be cooler than actually sitting standing in my office. Uh, possibly. At least I'll have a little bit of a, a breeze. Mm. And I'll cycle in the, in the woods anyway. So I, I, I got asked to send some photographs in to one of those aggregator accounts, right? Um, you know, Pole Dance Central or whatever. And they wanted permission from all the people in the images to feature their images, which is fine. I just couldn't be bothered. Yeah. To then contact everybody and, and find out, so I just didn't bother. Um, and then the um, they mailed me again. Don't I'm you... like, can you, you know, do you want to submit some images to yeah. Pole Dance Central? I was like, yeah, all right, fine, right, I will. And I wrote to all of them for permission. And nobody wrote back, so I couldn't submit anything. Ah. And don't you normally get releases with the kind of work you do? You don't need permission in the UK. Legally, you, it's not required. Oh. It's, it's not required. Oh. So don't bother. Not for, not for editorial use, which this was. Um, but because their organization wanted permission, and I don't collect releases because I can't be asked. Um, I didn't have written permission. You know, I didn't. I I couldn't say, "Oh, here are the releases," because I I don't have them. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if I can be bothered. Um, where is the sort order in this goddamn thing? Do you like them? Yeah. T brings up the toolbar at the bottom, and there's a sort order. On along the left of the of the toolbar. Where? I don't see anything to do with sort. It's got capture time and things. I've got folder capture. And then Are I've you got... in grid view, library view? No, I'm in develop. Yeah, you need to go you need oh, to be in, you need to sort library for this. Really? Okay, there it is. Jesus Christ. No need. All right. Got it. Cheers, Jez. Well, I'm going to disappear off and do some sweaty. Oh, that sounds altogether too sweaty for me, frankly. No, I don't mind it. Yeah. Oh. I should go to lunch soon, but. Yeah, that, that Godot slash is cute. I don't have anything I would use it on. Um. I, ostensibly, it would make a very nice off-camera flash for like my Fuji X100, um, like a very nice on-camera flash, I should say, for my Fuji X100. But I don't. All right, catch you guys later. See you in a bit, Jez. Um, but I don't. See you, Jez. I only use the X100 as like a snapshot camera, so I'd never actually bother putting a flash on it. Like if I can't get the photograph without a flash with that camera in this sort of shooting context, I use it. I wouldn't bother adding a flash like it you know i treat it like a pocket camera almost um so i don't know where i'd use it but it's a really nice bit of design i just hope they don't go down the rabbit hole of making sort of skeuomorphic products that become awkward to use you know 
it's retro. And it's like, yeah, but you've taken away the LCD menu, which is really useful. <laughs> oh, but it's all on the dials. I can't see the dials in the dark, mate. Like, <laughs> bring back the LED. <sighs> I should go get ready for lunch as well. Mm. I have not eaten lunch. Should probably have done that. That would involve going downstairs. Ding, 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 ding. Oh yeah, beautiful white LED primaries being hit in the face with a bat. Every time that swung around on my viewfinder, it was bloody blinding. <laughs> See you then, yeah. Catch you in a minute, Lars. Dun 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 d
Pieces in a bit of thinking while we lived our lives. Each other, each other.
I'm just trying to find a waterfall. <coughs> Anybody's wondering why I'm bobbing and weaving around. Um, on that.
Oh, got sidetracked. 